One, two, three. One, two, three. Put it down, put it up. Okay. I, I, I wait for a signal from your side then. Yeah, sure. No problem. Okay, then once again, uh, hi. I'm Anno. I'm going to talk about um, kit tracking technologies and their uh, risk and applications, which is a pretty uncommon subject for a talk, at least for me. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to see some people here. I mean, it's a uncommon subject for a talk, and it's a first talk on the second day, which is uh, thankless, uh, uh, thankless uh, the schedule point, kind of. Um, the agenda is I, I want to introduce to, to the technology, then I'll talk about uh, some approaches, how to, how to get a feeling um, if the technology is a good thing or a bad thing or something. Uh, I'll take something like a hacker's approach, how to attack this kind of a technology. I'll take the, the risk analysis approach. Is it good or is it bad? What's the benefit? Uh, do we gain something as for safety or security of kids or uh, do we even m maybe lose uh, and uh, last but not least I'll, I'll give some kind of notes on the uh, social implications of that stuff that uh, stuff has been covered uh, elsewhere much better than I can but just to, to throw in some personal notes on the uh, uh, social implications um, some words on my person, I'm a kind of, uh, I, usually I call myself an old school networker. That's what I am. I, I like to w working on uh, a layer two to four. Everything above that is uh, some strange applications stuff I do not understand really and I do not care for. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a frequent speaker um, on different conferences. Usually I have uh, subjects like uh, MPLS security or voice of IP security, uh, virtualization security, stuff like this. And there I have some demos. So, so at least in this talk, even though it's a bit un uncommon for me, uh, I don't have uh, any demos. Um, so don't expect any practical stuff here. It's a purely theoretical talk, which might turn into some practical uh, stuff uh, later in some years. Um, some, some notes on the background. I had some discussion with my wife. Uh, we, we, have, uh, we have two kids. Uh, on this technology, would it be a good thing to be able to, to track the kids? I mean, every mother is scared about um, kid getting kidnapped or um, having an accident, um, being somewhere without uh, being able to, to contact um, the doctor or whatever. Uh, so there is some pretty uh, appealing aspect in that for, for parents. <coughs> And I had, when we talked about that, I, I did not have, let's say, a good feeling about that. I, I thought, oh no, I, I don't like this stuff. Um, there is, uh, that's, that's strange. Um, uh, and I had to convince her why it is strange. And I wrote down some things. And um, being in, in, in Dayton in the last day, so I, I knew I had an, uh, some, some work to be done in Dayton in April. Uh, Brian, uh, Angus Fight, uh, he, he, he told me there was a cool conference, not a con going on. And, Maybe this could be a good place to talk about this stuff, and that's why I'm, why I'm here. So into the technical details, those uh, technologies I call kit tracking technologies are a kind of subset of technologies which are uh, sometimes um, have the title location-based services, uh, which implies location, locate something, and then uh, offer some service based on the location. Um, maybe uh, if uh, uh, locate if somebody else is uh, somebody is in his office or he's not in his office, and then redirect the call. This is a simple example of a location-based service. And um, these location-based services uh, usually locate some some kind of asset, some kind of electronic piece uh, that's located. One could be tempted to replace uh, that electronic piece by 
uh, locate a human, but in fact it's, it's still the, the electronic piece you locate. It's not a human. Maybe it's a human who, who, who carries it, uh, but it's, st it's still the electronic piece, and this may turn, turn out interesting in a uh, security context later. Uh, the communications protocols, which are used, um, might be RFID uh, with implants on a short range. They might be Wi-Fi, WiMAX, Bluetooth. There is a whole space of location-based services built on Wi-Fi uh, that's uh, currently evolving, and it might be GPS. Those are the three um, main, let's say, protocols involved. And we have some components, usually just some, some kind of sender. Uh, this uh, throughout the talk, I'll some I'll mainly talk about uh, those senders uh, used as implants. Uh, this is a picture of, oh, picture from a guy, uh, pretty uh, pretty prominent for the uh, for the RFID uh, stuff he does. He he even wrote a book RFID toys. That guy has uh, RFID implants in his hands, um, which are here X-rayed. And he uses uh, the, that stuff to, uh, for access control to his house and to, to start his car and uh, stuff like this. Uh, so there is some, some sending instance. Uh, there is uh, some communication means. Uh, there is a receiver uh, receiving the signal and uh, some backend database. These are com the components included in the whole picture. Uh, with RFID, uh, you usually, uh, there is some specialty that's, uh, that the sender or the tech, as it's um, mostly called in RFID context, gets his energy from, um, from the so-called reader, which m might not be only a reader, but also a writing device. <coughs> but that's the same thing as with smart card readers who, who don't necessarily read. It's not a right term, but uh, a common term. Uh, with our RFID, uh, as I said, the specialty is um, the, the thing receives its energy um, from here, from a magnetic field, so it doesn't need an internal energy source. Uh, what does happen? That uh, sending instance, that sending device, stores some, some data, which might simply be an ID uh, consisting of uh, 32 bits, uh, for example, and which may, there may be additional data, uh, for example, medical records. Uh, on that sending device, uh, this um, ID, and if needed, the data is transmitted to the receiver. Uh, this receiver might be, in the case of GPS, it's a satellite. Uh, in case of RFID or Wi-Fi, uh, might, be, uh, might be some receiving entities in public spaces. Whenever you enter a building, uh, you, you pass through with your RFID tag, and um, so yeah, you can be located, this guy is, in this building currently. When you leave it, uh, again, and some, some read, uh, read access to that uh, device, and uh, so it, it gets known you're, you're no more in the building. Um, so it might be gates, it might be a, a satellite, um, some point where you transmit your data to. The ID, in case of RFID, might be, uh, usually is, is mapped to a set in a database, uh, which identifies the, the asset further. So it's a, it might not be uh, your personal data, like your name on the, on the tag, just the idea, uh, just the ID. But once you identify that ID in the database, it's clear, okay, that's um, uh, John Miller from, from Cleveland. Uh, he has that age. Um, he has the, those um, medical records. So all the stuff usually is in, in the database. It's not on the, on the, um, the tag or sending device. And the exact location, then, this is the whole thing. Um, exact location of that um, electronic piece may be located uh, and, and, and tracked and displayed um, um, in, in some sense uh, to authorized parties, uh, maybe via web interface. A mother of a kid might be able, OK, um, I want to know where is my kid currently. Uh, logs into some um, SSL page and uh, there's a, a, a land map, and you, you can see, okay, my, my kid currently is on the way home or still in school or uh, is out on, um, in, in, at a swimming pool or whatever. This is what the whole thing is about. And there are, there's a lot of standards in the RFID space. Uh, the standards itself are not important here. Uh, it's more, 
it's more important there is a, a lot of standards which might lead to incompatibilities and stuff uh, we will cover later. Uh, this is just to give you, give you an idea how the data is organized on those tags. Um, there is some, um, some serial number and one might be, depending on the standard, might be able to store data on, on tags. Uh, short comparison of the communication technologies um, as for their range, those technology I mentioned, as for their um, power source, with RFID, there's no power source. With um, uh, Wi-Fi or GPS, you need a power source, which might be uh, a problem when it's in your body. Uh, as I, I already said, I'm going to talk about implants. But technology evolves, and there are currently there are plants and technologies with, uh, which might uh, enable you to have uh, something like in, in, in this size, uh, like a piece of a, of a finger, uh, somewhere within your body. Uh, which uh, has a small battery um, and uh, is able to transmit uh, uh, data within a given range. So what's the purpose of this stuff? Kit tracking uh, in case of accidents, or uh, let's say human tracking, which may be kids, this is the uh, main, main subject of my talk, uh, which may be delinquents on probation, there it's currently used, uh, already used, uh, prevention of, of kidnapping, uh, by tracking, being able to track kids, or access control. Big thing in all that is access control, uh, access to buildings. The, the Mexican uh, general attorney had such a thing implanted uh, two years ago uh, to be able to uh, access um, uh, rooms with classified data. And uh, him and some, some employees uh, got implants um, so you want good control who's, who can enter some room uh, just by that implant and an RFID stack. Uh, access to laptops. This is what that guy does um, where I showed the x-rays. Uh, at Schmucon, there was a guy uh, who um, got access to his laptop by some implant he had to, somewhere in his arm. And major malfunction cloned that later on, which was funny. <laughs> but I, I get back to that. Uh, or that might uh, simple um, control to access uh, to drinks at some stuff like RoboBar. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard of RoboBar, so as the name um, implies, uh, and a kind of automated bar where you can get drinks 24-7, uh, um, but uh, this stuff has to check is, is the person who wants to get a drink uh, allowed to get a drink for, as, for, from, as for the age. And so you might have some implant uh, just uh, show it to the RoboBar, uh, this implant um, or the database tell her, hey, I'm, I'm more than 20 years old, uh, I should be able to get a drink. Uh, so control of access to something is uh, one of the big purposes of this technology. Uh, some, some examples where this is already used, um, mostly in the, in the form of badges, not implants. But the next step, uh, lots of... Um, companies and um, researchers are envisioning is um, uh, do this all this stuff with um, not with badges but with implants uh, delinquents on probation there is already used they are allowed to stay at house uh, at home so you save a place in, in, in prisons but they are not allowed to, to leave the, uh, their homes so they have uh, some kind of bracelet and whenever this bracelet gets out of range of some receiver uh, some um, authority might be informed, hey, he's leaving his home. Uh, there was uh, some stuff with kids at, a, uh, at, at some school in California where the kids got equipped with bracelets to, to be able to track them in, 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 in within the school. Uh, there were a lot of parents' protests, and that's why they stopped the project. There is some stuff, the, the Ottawa citizen, where uh, Alzheimer patients got um, the bracelets to be able to track them once they get lost. Uh, the FDA has admitted um, special chips for medical records, uh, implants in fact. Th that stuff is about implants. Uh, such an implant could look like, uh, uh, you won't be able to see it from more than one, uh, some meters away from me, but uh, to give you an idea, this is uh, the stuff I'm talking about uh, as for implants. Uh, yeah, Brian. <coughs> it, you can easily inject it with a, uh, with a needle and um, remember that, that picture of the guy. 
Uh, there are some uh, theme parks who give away uh, bracelets for kids to be able to track them when, whenever the parents lose them. And the stuff is used in pets and cattle um, already uh, on a wide, wide scale. Uh, some, some questions that arise when discussing this, uh, this technology. There are two obvious questions. I will cover lots of uh, things um, in, in my talk. Uh, as I said, it's, um, this talk is writing down some unstructured or random thoughts on, on, the, on the whole subject. But the uh, first obvious question is, who runs the database? Uh, who runs the infrastructure um, being able to track people? It's, uh, is it the government? Uh, it's, uh, are private corporations doing it? Uh, if so, what about trust and privacy and all this stuff? Uh, uh, usually governments uh, tend to do things not themselves, but buy services from private corporations uh, for that stuff. Um, uh, this uh, brings up the question, uh, who watches to watch us? Who watches what they do with that data? Who watches, uh, who can access the data? And one, I one interesting side aspect might be, how will the SLAs look like? Uh, if you uh, subscribe to such a service as a parent, uh, what can they guarantee? as for the reachability and the reliability of the system. Uh, this is uh, interesting when you think about it. Um, second obvious question is uh, access control. Who has access to what data? Only the parents? What about the grandparents? What about nannies? What about teachers? Uh, what about um, uh, which authentication met methods are used there? Uh, what if you ask your neighbor, can you take care of my kid in the afternoon? Should you give him access to the system? Uh, if so, um, how re do you remove that access? So is it based on some physical uh, stuff like two-factor authentication? If so, you can hand it over to your neighbor, but what uh, if, you if you lose it? Uh, and all that, uh, there are a lot of questions which are still unclear uh, about this technology. Uh, what about medical records in the case of inconsciousness? You have an accident, um, you have medical records in your implant. Uh, who do you allow to access the data? Obviously, it should be the, the doctor taking care of you, but how do you authorize uh, him? And how, how can you guarantee it's not somebody else? Uh, um, this is uh, still unclear. Who audits the access? Again, uh, contractual requirements. What about SLAs? How and when and uh, with, with what guarantees to access those data? These are two very obvious questions. Others will arise uh, throughout the talk. Taking a hacker's approach, look at this technology and um, try to, to um, I mean, most of us uh, here in the room are in some way, um, we, we regard ourselves as uh, hackers in whatever sense of the word. Uh, Try to, to have a hacker's approach. What, what, how can I break? Or how can I circumvent or explore? To, to, more, to use a more neutral uh, word. Uh, explore the technology. Uh, just applying common attack methods. Different things come into mind uh, easily. Uh, what about spoofing? When a person appears to be in a place, but in fact is not. Uh, if, uh, if somebody who wants to, uh, to kidnap your kid uh, can pretend the kid is still in school, uh, but the kid isn't, he, he, he captured it, uh, he gains a lot of time, you, it will um, devaluate the whole, whole value of the system um, from the parent's view. Uh, kids might try that themselves. Uh, hey, I'm, I, I'm, I could be tracked with that stuff uh, from my parents. Uh, uh, how can I... Um, escape from the tracking. The, the nerd in class uh, becomes popular at once, uh, as he might be able to, to implement uh, that, uh, that stuff. Um, what about information gather on un unauthorized access? Uh, somebody breaking into the system could do that um, with the intent to find out where is some person currently, or could do it, uh, think of a pedophile, uh, are there any, uh, any girls at uh, the age of 8 of 10 uh, here in, in, in my environment at the moment? Um, those, uh, I mean, this, uh, it's, it's information, and it's information which should be accessible to some authorized persons and not accessible to unauthorized. Uh, this is what the whole field of computer security is built on, some way, uh, uh, 
uh, be able to, uh, to have a distinction between unauthorized and authorized access. Once this, dis once this distinction uh, gets broken, uh, lots of problems may arise. Uh, what about cloning? Uh, who, um, most of you who were at Schmookon might remember Major Malfunction's talk. Uh, there was a guy, uh, the Major Malfunction gives great presentations he, he presented on RFID and cloning. And during the talk, it turned out the night before, he met a guy who was at, the, at Schmookon uh, who uses an implant to get access to his laptop. And uh, he asked that, uh, that guy, could you please come uh, to the presenter, uh, presenter's desk? And he cl on the fly, live demo, he cloned that uh, stuff and was able to get access to that guy's laptop. Nice demo. G great talk. And I mean, um, clone, being able to clone that stuff, even if they try to, uh, to prevent it, technology evolves. Once you're able to clone, the whole uh, security of the system is, uh, is, is broken. Uh, obviously, denial of service might be a problem. Uh, one might be able to attack the, uh, the infrastructure, the database behind it. There are some, um, nether, uh, some researchers from the Netherlands who run a website, RFID virus. They already um, wrote some viruses for RFID systems. And uh, being able to write a thing which uh, con uh, contaminates uh, people by RFID is, is quite interesting as uh, the word virus gets a bit back to its uh, initial uh, connotation. Uh, it's no more electronic stuff, but um, you, you carry it with you. All classic database attacks might uh, come into, into mind. Um, uh, think about, thinking about it, that a bit further, uh, taking a terrorist approach, one uh, might be able, once uh, you're able to track a person, you might be able to attack that person uh, target, in a targeted way. Um, uh, just uh, attack all uh, persons which have uh, uh, some citizenship, or if, if that one is not stored, you c one could uh, still be able to correlate it from the, the window of the chip or something. Uh, being in Cleveland, uh, m maybe you know that tires are getting tagged since many years. Uh, there is, uh, I think there's some agreement in the tire industry uh, to be able to track them for inventory uh, reasons and whatever. Once you find out, um, uh, there, there must be some database, or it shouldn't be too, uh, too far-fetched uh, to imagine a database where every car is, uh, there's an inventory of the cars with, with the tires uh, for maintenance reasons and stuff. Once you get access to the database, uh, one could uh, place a land bomb, for which, a landmine which, uh, which goes up when some tech comes along. I mean, I'm from Germany, and uh, in, in Germany, we, we, at the moment, we have a big debate on the uh, terrorist attacks um, from, the, from the 70s, as those uh, guys are uh, being um, released from, from prison at the moment. And uh, there have been such attacks. When, when General Attorney of Germany came along, they, they brought up a bomb in a, in a paper bin. And they had to, had to know, what you have to target uh, uh, somebody, which might be much easier with this uh, technology. Uh, second approach, when, um, what I did when I tried to get a feeling why this is a bad thing. I, I took the risk analysis approach. I'm a, I'm a guy from IT security, and uh, usually I, I very often use an approach when I have to um, prioritize or evaluate technologies. What do I gain? What do I lose security-wise? Uh, and I uh, use stuff I call risk analysis, which is a formal approach. One can take formulas and uh, Excel sheets and stuff. Uh, to be able to, uh, to get a feeling if th is this good for security or is this bad for security. Everybody of us permanently does some um, risk analysis on an informal way in, in, in daily life. Uh, I, I, sup I assume most of you are, maybe aside from some hangover from yesterday, uh, fe feeling pretty good in this room right now. This might be different if this room was in Baghdad or in Kabul or somewhere Imagine another place. Uh, still, you feel safe. You feel safe as you're in Cleveland. Um, uh, you feel safe as this is a, a hotel which has a roof. Maybe we are not um, currently um, 
Cleveland is not currently under terrorist attack. Uh, there are no planes crashing into Cleveland. All this we take into a very uh, into some uh, some account when we judge our daily uh, situation. The same goes for crossing the street. There's a car uh, approaching 50 meters um, away. Some people cross the street. Some others don't. That's risk analysis. And uh, whenever trying to understand the technology, risk analysis is a good approach to understand uh, the benefits or, or costs of a technology. Uh, for example, this is what uh, Bruce Neyer does. Um, Bruce Neyer has some pretty good dis discussions on sky marshals. Uh, he tried to, to put into account, okay, we have a risk terrorist attack on a plane, which we might mitigate with um, sky marshals. That risk is one plane out of a million. Uh, so um, probability, one of a million, mitigated risk, uh, loss of um, injuries and, 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 and deaths or, or mitigation of that. And on the other side, uh, there are people, guns, carrying at planes that so they have to um, uh, maintain that guns. Uh, there may be accidents. Uh, they might get, uh, some attacker might get into the plane. Uh, take the gun away from the sky marshal and this stuff and taking all this into account it might not be a good idea to uh, put sky marshals in planes so just uh, put it all into a method, mathematical formula and uh, this is a good approach um, when one leaves aside the, the emotional uh, stuff uh, staring at some technology it's always a good idea to ask yourself, what are the requirements, the benefits, uh, the side effects? Are there new threats arising from some technology? And doing this on uh, that uh, kit tracking stuff, two categories of risks must be considered. Those risks that the technology is supposed to mitigate, and maybe some risks uh, that are newly introduced or induced by the technology. And risk is... Um, one should take into account the probability of an event and the consequence. And doing this on, with kit tracking and regarding uh, threats like accidents, insufficient medical treatment, getting lost some way, kidnapping, uh, delinquent leaving a house, this is a kind of threat from the governmental uh, authority view. Uh, he shouldn't leave his house, uh, he might be dangerous, uh, so keep him uh, in the house by uh, monitoring him. Uh, one gets to, uh, take, taking this risk analysis approach, one gets to interesting results. Um, I, I, I pick some examples here. Uh, talking about accidents, this makes, uh, tracking kits in case of accidents makes only sense with GPS technology. It doesn't make sense with RFID or Wi-Fi as uh, accidents may happen outside the city. Within cities, you might be able to track them with RFID or Wi-Fi, uh, going through gates, passing public buildings and stuff, but um, that's not, you want to track your kid when it's going to ski. Uh, or, uh, as a parent, this might be an approach. Um, uh, but kids have mobile phones anyway. They can wear, for, for medical records, additional bracelets. And uh, talking about implants, there is no, um, how can you ensure that stuff is still working if there was an accident? If somebody has something in his arm and uh, uh, is injured, um, you, you, you can't really ensure that the stuff is, uh, is still working, which is much easier wearing a bracelet. You can put uh, uh, metal stuff there which can't break in a case of accident, all that stuff. So in, in for accidents, I think this is not the right technology. Talking about kidnapping, one can, um, the, the second big thing that comes into minds of um, anxious uh, parents um, or, or scared parents. Uh, uh, I should use this to prevent my kid from, from, from kidnapping. Uh, if the attacker in that case is a skilled and motivated attacker, this is what we, we call them in a risk analysis. Uh, we have a skilled motivated attacker uh, or we have a, I like a script kid or whatever. If the attacker is skilled and motivated, uh, he will suddenly be aware of the possibility of a kid being chipped. So what will an attacker, a kidnapper in that case do, uh, using blocking techniques, uh, put, the put a kid into a shielded cage, for example, 
which might uh, even deteriorate the kid's conditions during the kidnapping. And uh, the, the, the most important point here is it might be much easier for that kind of attacker. It's, it's just risk analysis. Take one risk, in this case a kidnapper. Uh, this risk might be much bigger uh, with that technology as it's um, the same um, kidnapper who had to track uh, school buses and stuff for several weeks before uh, to find out where is this kid going at what, what time um, uh, and stuff. And now he, he just has to, to break into a system or to, to bribe an employee of the corporation running the whole system uh, to find out, okay, um, I just have to pick that kid at that time, at that point. Um, uh, so uh, from the whole, from the big picture, just uh, taking the former risk analysis approach, um, uh, the, the risk situation with the technology is probably worse than without. So you, you don't really, as from parents' view, you don't really gain um, anything. This was one of the points which uh, persuaded my wife uh, when I talked with her about that. And uh, another uh, risk may be uh, attacks by an, uh, I, I call that an occasional uh, attacker, somebody who's driven by some sense of whatever, some uh, strange things going on in his mind. Uh, the technology won't help anyway. You, you won't be able to, uh, to mitigate this risk and uh, there might even be situations uh, which uh, wasn't the whole stuff for your kid if it, uh, if it has such, uh, such technology or if uh, such technology was in place uh, widespread, uh, uh, the attacker might um, react in some uh, not so good way there. Uh, and um, still in the, in the former risk analysis approach, there is um, the m new risks might be introduced by the technology itself. Uh, your body might not tolerate it. An attacker might be able, I mean, it's a, there's a transmission. Um, you can destroy uh, Wi-Fi in the Wi-Fi context or in the, I've not heard of that stuff in GPS, but with RFID or Wi-Fi, you can destroy text by um, overpowering them in some sense. Uh, this might be a risk. Um, uh, there might be side effects um, on things like pacemakers, uh, imagine scenario, T two teenagers uh, kissing each other for the first time and uh, uh, her, her heart starts beating um, very fastly and it's not because he kisses, uh, she kisses the guy but as the guy who has, some, um, has some, some technical implant and she has a pacemaker and there is some uh, side effect on this. Uh, uh, the, the, the biggest risks, uh, from my understanding, which might uh, be imposed by this technology is the modified parent's behavior. Parents might think we can track him anyway. We don't have to wait until he's out of uh, sight or we don't have to wait until he's, he entered that building. Um, we, can, we can track him anyway. So parents' behavior might change and there might be a loss of dignity or privacy for the kids, which leads us to the social implications of that stuff. I already said uh, the, the whole uh, social discussion on the uh, social implications has, um, has been done in at other places with much more knowledge and, and depth than I could. And there's a very readable book called Spy Chips, which I recommend reading on RFID technology and its abuses. So I just want to give some random thoughts in this part of the talk. After the, the hackers approach and the, the risk analysis approach, I, I just want to give some, some feelings I have on this, uh, or some questions that might arise. I, I have three parts here. The first I call the panopticon, uh, the second will be on insertion and removal, and third on correlation. As for the panopticon, this is uh, a term which is um, uh, gained some widespread knowledge by a discussion from a, f a French philosopher called Michel Foucault. Uh, with one of his main works is uh, Discipline and Punish, the birth of the prison. Uh, I've been, um, I I'm, I'm have some, some background in the, uh, in the humanity space, so I, I had some contact with um, Michel Foucault and he describes um, something he calls a panopticon, which is not in his term, but in, uh, somebody else brought up the term. And the panopticon is a, is a kind of building where there's a, 
the center there's a tower. And around the tower, there is some peripheric building which is divided into cells. And in each cell, there is a person. And those cells have a window on the inside and on the outside, so light comes through. And um, in, in the tower, there are windows uh, which inhibit seeing if there is somebody in the tower or not. Uh, so you can, with one person, you can easily guard all the, all the cells around you. Uh, this is uh, the principle of the panopticon, uh, uh, which is um, still used. Um, I, I was told that uh, US Postal uh, uses this kind of stuff in their places where, the, where all the packets are processed. Um, the packets, not in uh, IP packets, but physical ones. Uh, they have windows from supervisor um, um, cabinets and or cabinets, and, and you can't uh, walking on that uh, package. You don't know if there's somebody behind that window or not, but you could be observed uh, if you if you steal something. Uh, this is the panopticon principle, and. Um, as I said, uh, so the, the person in being in th such a panopticon is, is subject to a permanent visibility. Uh, so the panopticon can be thought of as, as a mechanism of omnipresent permanent surveillance. Uh, and this is exactly what kit tracking induces from a kid's perspective. It, detro it destroys the dignity and privacy you are under constant, um, or the kids are put on a constant feeling, hey, daddy and mom will be able to track where I am. Imagine what this does um, me mentally wise. Uh, it might produce a streamlined kids uh, in the sense, oh, I shouldn't go there. They will notice I'm leaving uh, my, my normal way from back from school to home. Um, I shouldn't do that. Uh, this will have vast implications on the way of thinking and the way of obedience so we, we impose on our kids. Um, a second uh, unordered or random thought I want to throw into it uh, is the question of insertion and removal. When uh, should, should uh, such a thing be inserted? Um, evidently, that could be at, um, when, uh, at, at birth. They currently do that um, in newborns and in clinics get the bracelets to be able to track them, uh, um, either by GPS or RFID. Um, the the more, more interesting question is when should it be removed? Uh, should it re be removed at all? Or maybe the kids grow up with uh, the feeling, hey, I have some implant. This implant uh, has advantages and disadvantages. Sure, it could be tracked, but well, I have nothing to hide. Uh, and I can um, easily uh, go into places where I want. I can pay with that. Um, maybe there is some comfort with wearing it, so why should you remove it? But um, thinking about removal, the question come up, when should it be removed? Uh, at the age of five or 10? Or when they become um, adolescents and uh, develop their own sense of um, liberty and uh, non-obedience? Uh, or talking more formally at the age of drinking or at the age of emancipation or consent, or whatever, which brings up questions on um, what if you cross some um, boundaries then, and in one state uh, it's uh, 18, and in another state it's 21. Um, uh, you, you suddenly won't, don't want to be tracked while on spring break. Uh, this is the second question that comes up um, thinking about the technology. And um, I think the most interesting stuff um, or I had when, when I did, uh, had the discussion with my wife is um, in the space of what I call correlation. For, for scared parents, it might only be a very small step from the question, where is she currently, to the question, uh, what's, she, what's she doing there? And who else is there? Uh, I mean, from a parent's view, uh, those are, it's, it's not too far-fetched, those questions. And, um, thinking about who else is there, uh, why are the, okay, who's there, who else is there? Isn't this, isn't this a place where I uh, uh, put him or what, whatever minority uh, you can put in? Um, uh, those, uh, those people, they, they sell drugs, what's she doing there? Uh, those people um, practice uh, some sexual practices. Uh, what, what is my kid doing there? What's she doing at the gates of, her, of the abortion clinic? Uh, what's she doing uh, 
the Robbie on the men's toilet. Um, remember Romy and Juliet, this uh, thing might never be happened uh, as they were from, from families which were enemies. Why is she, what's she doing together with somebody from that family? All this, uh, this is a small step, thinking about it, and the question is, what, what is she doing there? Not only with, with whom, by some data correlation, but what? And it, technically, this is easy to answer. When, when, whenever such a technology is in place, you can easily correlate the information where is somebody uh, with um, information from urban surveillance cameras, which are in place anyway. Uh, so who else is there? Uh, you could uh, combine it with um, facial recognition. Who are those guys um, together with my, with my girl now? Uh, you might be able to, uh, to correlate with uh, credit card data or gain context by whatever mechanisms, um, MySpace, uh, Google Map, um, some, uh, all those technologies um, which uh, I am here and who of my friends are here too. Uh, just correlate this data and you might get uh, from a parents or from an authority's view get interesting data. Uh, and this, um, those were the three kind of uh, things that came up uh, when, when discussing this stuff. Uh, the, the panopticon thing, um, which I absolutely do not like, um, the, the question for correlation, the question for, for insertion and removal. Uh, think about this stuff. I, I just uh, the, the main uh, intent of this talk is um, not so much providing technical information, but more than um, discuss some technology, even if it's so far it's mostly a monologue, but discuss the technology and, and make you think about uh, this stuff. Uh, so I, I can summarize that there are technologies to track humans. Uh, they, they exist and there are some, they evolve Things get smaller, uh, things, uh, people get implants, uh, there are patents on lots of this stuff uh, already in place. Uh, anxious parents might find these technologies uh, appealing uh, to prevent some risks. Um, undertaking a risk analysis approach, um, approach might show uh, you don't really mitigate the risks, you bring up new risks, um, that the whole situation might be worse than before. And furthermore, those uh, technologies um, erode uh, on a large, uh, large scale without implication we, we can really understand now uh, children's privacy and dignity. And uh, as a father, I can say, uh, I do not want this uh, for my kids. So, finished here. Any, uh, this is my, my, my slide for questions. Uh, I titled it here, Questions and Discussion, as I did not really give a technical talk. Uh, Anything somebody wants to, to add or questions, whatever. Two questions uh, I start here. Which one, the, the RFID stuff? Yeah, the RFID stuff, um, there has to be external power source. So it can't be queried, it has to be there, but um, all the other stuff. I mean, the, the, the terms I use, sender and receiver, are not entirely correct on, on a in a technical sense. Uh, think of it, um, two um, parties communicating, whoever starts uh, the communication. It's not um, in, in every, uh, every context, it's the same as for the, the, the client and the server, so speaking network. Well. I have read the book that you were talking about, RFID toys, and the gentleman, the photographs you showed, where he went up and had the RFIDs into the web of his hand. My take on the first two-thirds of the book, as he Just cool. did his car, his computer, the security, so forth. He was exploring the technologies. However, my take on the last third of the book was, do we realize the danger, and if we do turn this technology loose, on the abuse, as you have pointed out, and a man who has went so far to has actually had the implants, experimented with them, familiar with them, uh, I won't say he's an expert, 
last year it was a lot more knowledgeable than I am. I really appreciated the last part where you said, hey, it is everyone's responsibility. Please be aware of what we are introducing into society. This could be a very bad thing as well. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that comment. In, in fact, I have, uh, uh, this is the guy, uh, the gentleman was talking about, his name is Amar Grafstra. Um, he has an, um, a, a website dedicated for, for that stuff and uh, he wrote a book uh, uh, which is called RFID Toys. Uh, if you want to get um, some knowledge on the technology and uh, um, my, my presentation was just a starting point, if you want to dig uh, into this, this stuff, I recommend reading um, the RFID Toys book which you can easily spot here and the spy chips books. So those are two good um, um, starting points aside from my um, presentation. Anything else as for comments or question? Do you have any comments? I mean, um, we're talking about um, RFID in general, but what about all the stuff they're putting in all of the uh, in all of our products, you know, Walmart's mandating it. It's basically, it doesn't matter whether it's in us or not because everything the blue jeans will, will be wearing will be tagged. And if they can track that through the credit card purchase at the point of sale, you know, do you have any thoughts on, on basically what's happening is everything around us, everything is going to have an RFID in it. Um, any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, um, in, in, in the sense, um, I mean, um, I... Uh, dedicated, I deliberately excluded um, the, the discussion of RFID tags in things from my talk, but um, uh, the main problem I see is, as you point out, data correlation. Um, once uh, assets are tagged uh, and um, data is correlated in some sense, it might be or it would be easy uh, to track people even without implants. Um, there are some, I think it's, uh, I don't remember who, but, uh, but uh, lots of corporations, there are some corporations which uh, started taking their uniforms uh, to have an inventory of uniforms and when they get washed, um, where are they and things. And once you can correlate this data um, with the people wearing the uniforms, you can track the people by tracking the uniforms and not uh, the, the humans. And um, uh, it should be easy uh, to, uh, to track. Um, once you, you can correlate data, this jeans was bought with that credit, com credit card, um, or uh, uh, this jeans <coughs> is worn by somebody who has uh, this ID on his um, driver's license, uh, it could be, it will be easy to track people not based on their implants but on, on other sources of data. Uh, thank you for that um, comment. Yeah, not not yet. Um, I doubt um, with, the, with that um, simple generation of um, transponders, which, which are called tags, uh, this will be possible as, um, uh, as has been shown by major malfunction and others. Uh, there's a researcher, Jonathan West, who's, as long as you can clone them, uh, this destroys the whole chain of evidence, um, which might be based in some RFID context. Uh, uh, there are newer generations which uh, work with authentication and uh, cryptographic uh, stuff um, which might be, uh, which might mitigate the risks of cloning or spoofing or whatever. But I never, uh, to get back to your question, I never heard of any case where um, there was some RFID based um, evidence uh, or something. Yes. Okay. Um, now, getting back to this one thing about tracking people without their knowledge, you know, uh, like even the cell phones, you know, that they, uh, in Los Angeles, for example, they will, they will uh, track the rate of traffic, unbeknownst to people who happen to have cell phones, but basically they have a tracking service on the Internet that will basically track through data that they get from a cell phone provider how fast the traffic's moving along a certain stretch of freeway. And so... Um, 
And that data is all available. I mean, granted, the cell phone companies aren't going to be selling that data to, you know, just anybody, but they'll sell it to, you know, the NSA, you know. And so any thoughts on, on <clears throat> where this technology is going in terms of now we all have Blackberries and we'll all have, you know, Bluetooth headsets and all of that kind of stuff. Any, any final conclusions on where we're all going with this? Uh, I mean, I, I didn't know th um, that um, case from, uh, you said LA, was that? Yeah, Los Angeles. They, they uh, are able to just track, you know, the traffic. You can go to a website like right now and see how fast the traffic's moving in Los Angeles based on passive responders of, yeah. of people's cell phones who don't even know they're part of this study. Uh, and actually, it may have just been a study. It may not be online now, but they, they showed the feasibility of basically using passive tracking of cell phones, you know, just from where they're at on the transponders. Yeah, let's, let's put it like this. Um, when, when being asked for some final conclusion, uh, I, I think there are more and more technologies uh, which um, enable, uh, or enable some kind of uh, surveillance um, party uh, to, to track behavior. Uh, in, if you if you move uh, topology-wise, um, or if you, uh, what you do at some places and stuff, we, we, we should uh, just be aware of that. Uh, the problem is um, uh, there is a, sometimes you can hear a stance um, from people like, oh, I'm, I'm an innocent guy, I don't have to fear anything. Why, why, why should be my problem with being tracked? Uh, this is a very naive approach as uh, the same people asked about those technologies, they usually want to apply it on others, on the weak kids or delinquents or Alzheimer patients. Um, um, do it with the others, but um, don't do it with me. Uh, and uh, even if you did with me, where should be my problem? I am an uh, innocent and honest citizen. Uh, this is rather naive. Uh, I think everybody of us uh, has uh, situations in his life when he doesn't want to be tracked. Wherever we are then or what we do, and there's a constant move to data sources where this is, um, which enable the, the transparent society, and we should just be aware of that. And if I contributed with my talk to data awareness, I'm happy. So have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you.